Okay, you wanted it, so here it is. The Steam OS install on the Atari VCS. Or at the very least, Chico River 8606 wanted to see it. Last time we installed some RAM and an M.2 drive and just did some Windows tests. We also repasted it and that helped temps a little, but as Marcus5150 pointed out, these temps still seem to be a bit high and I fully agree. Let's try his suggestion of turning off Core Boost and setting it back to 45 watt POR. So we'll head into the BIOS, go to Setup Utility, AMD CBS, and then I'm gonna set this to the 45 watt POR. And then we'll go to Zen Common Options and change the Core Performance Boost to Disabled, save and exit, and then let's reboot into Windows and do some tests, see how this is working now. Look at these temps. These are much more reasonable, only topping out in like the low 70s. That should extend its life quite a bit. We might even be able to go back up to 54 watt POR with Core Boost disabled. Anyway, let's jump into why you're all here today. The Steam OS Bazite install on the Atari VCS. As a reminder, here are the specs of the Atari VCS as I have mine configured currently. It has an AMD R1606G APU with two cores and four threads at 2.6 gigahertz. Uh, and I've upgraded the RAM to two by 16 gig for a total of 32 gigs at Samsung DDR4. Uh, 256 gigs SATA M.2 storage, 32 gig onboard EMMC flash storage for the Atari OS, a Radeon Vega 3 APU with three CUs, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, gigabit ethernet, Bluetooth 5.0, four USB 3.1 ports, so it's a pretty well-rounded machine, even though it's pretty low specs. But before we go any further, this portion of the video is sponsored by Mini Tool Partition Wizard. Da, 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 da. Hmm, how do I make space for a dual boot? Oh, neat, there's a guide. Oh, I'm gonna go to disk management. I've got this recovery partition. I can't do anything with it. Oh! But wait, there's a solution. Oh, I could just use Mini Tool Partition Wizard. Partition Wizard Pro gives you the tools to create, delete, format, move and resize partitions, as well as analyze and optimize for disk space and securely wipe your disk for cleanup, as well as advanced features. Let's give it a try now. We'll enter in our registration code and then see if we can manage our partitions. Thank you for your registration. <laughs> so this is for Mini Tool Partition Wizard Pro Ultimate. Okay, now let's try to do something with this partition. <laughs> Look at that. I can delete it. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's change the size on this one. Wow. That's so easy. Look at that! Another happy customer. Amazing! Click the sponsored link in the description. Grab your copy of Mini Tool Partition Wizard today. So in doing some searching, I found some videos on Hollow ISO and Chimera OS being installed on the Atari VCS, but I didn't find anything on Bazite. So let's take a look at how hard that is to do today. If you haven't added an M.2 drive or been into the BIOS before, I recommend checking out my previous video which has all the information there. Quick recap, press escape, and type in one of these passwords to get into the actual BIOS. Here's the rundown of steps we need. Perform any hardware upgrades like RAM or SSD. Download and flash the Bazite installer to USB. Set the Atari to be bootable from USB. Install Bazite and test it out. I'm going to assume that you've already installed RAM and an SSD, so let's get to the Bazite download and install instructions. So head to bazite.gg and click on download Bazite, and for the option to choose, click the drop down and pick desktop, and then for the GPU vendor, click the drop down and select AMD RX 4XX Plus. For the desktop environment, choose SteamOS, and then also choose the uh, Steam Gaming Mode, then click Download Bazite-Deck. Give it some time to download, and then we'll flash it using Rufus. Insert your USB drive at this point, load up Rufus, pick the image for Bazite, and then start flashing it. Pull the drive out and we'll get to the BIOS settings so that we can make sure we can boot from this USB stick. 
Some people, like Tenmark, have mentioned that you may need to downgrade the firmware on the Walmart units, as it seems like they were updated with a newer BIOS that nobody knows the password to. I'll put some links in the description where you can take a look at that and what steps are needed to downgrade the firmware. Anyway, press Escape to get to the BIOS front page and choose Boot Manager, then select the entry for EFI USB device, then hit Enter. In the grub menu that comes up, I found that the install would lock up if I just went to install Bazite Deck. So go to the troubleshooting menu instead and select the Install Bazite Deck 41 in Basic Graphics mode. Give it a couple minutes and you should get the install wizard. After you pick your language and keyboard layout, go to the System Installation Destination where it says No Disk Selected. Choose the drive that you want to install onto. I wouldn't install it on the EMMC because that's pretty small, so I'm going to pick my 256 gig drive. After I select my device, I'll click Done and then I'll get Installation Options. Then I'll click on Reclaim Space. What I'm going to do here is just delete all the partitions and then click the Reclaim Space button in the bottom of the window. After that, it'll bring you back to the main menu. And here's where I would create a user account. I just went with Bazite, Bazite. Uh, but if you want to have a stronger password for sudo, then go ahead and enter that here. I'm going to choose my time zone since I want to set it to central time. So I'm going to pick Chicago since that's central for me. And then we can click on begin installation. So the install will take a little bit of time. So go ahead and take a break, grab a snack, kick back and relax. When the install finishes, click on reboot system. After it reboots, you may be presented with a screen that says Continue Boot, Enroll MOK. You'll want to select Enroll MOK and then use Universal Blue as the password. And then once you reboot, you can enable Secure Boot from the BIOS. If you don't want Secure Boot, you can also just disable it and you can bypass this whole thing and that's what I ended up doing. After we give it a little bit more time, you should get the familiar startup screen and you'll be at the welcome menu for Bazite. Pick your language, pick your time zone again. It should be pre-selected since we picked it in the install wizard. So after you connect to Wi-Fi, it'll run some updates and then reboot. And once it comes back up, you should be presented with the usual sign-in window. And you can use your Steam mobile app or your account name and password to log in. After signing in and checking a couple things out, everything seems to be working. Head into desktop mode and then run through the Bazite Deck install applications wizard. This should come up automatically, so just choose anything you want, like Decky Loader, Frame Gen, MU Deck if you want to set this up. I'm just going to keep it pretty simple as I just want to get things up and running. A uh, little tip to get around this KDE wallet service, just click cancel every time it comes up and then enter in your sudo password. So in my case it would just be Bazite again. That way you don't keep getting this window coming up and prompting for a password. After you're done, reboot again and you should be all set and ready to go. So now that we're all set up, let's do some game tests and see how this performs compared to the Windows install on SteamOS on the Atari VCS. Here are the game tests and the settings I used. I'll let you look at these and form your own opinions.
Now you may have noticed that I indicated that SteamOS was set to 1080p internally. I messed with a few of the POR settings and core boost on and off and all that, but the performance didn't really change. However, when I set the SteamOS resolution to 720p, there's a decent performance boost in games. Take a look. So there you have it, Steam OS slash Bazite on the Atari VCS. It works pretty decent, even with it running Doom Eternal and it's kind of working hard. You can barely even hear the fan. And all the features seem to work, like Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and I was even able to connect the Atari Modern controller and use it like an Xbox controller wirelessly. Performance overall was a little underwhelming as it seemed to run better under Windows. But that's probably due to a specific Bazite build not being tailored for the VCS. So overall, I'd say do it. Install it. Compared to the stock Atari OS that these come with, Bazite is leaps and bounds better than that OS. Who knows? We might even get to try the official Steam OS build soon. If that happens, stay tuned as I will likely try that out on a bunch of devices. Speaking of that, if you like this content, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. God bless.